I completely agree. Like it's it's rinse, wash, and repeat for these toys. They're delusional, and they just think that these, you know, what do we what do we like to call them? Culture wars. Yeah. Are, are really going to be are really the the magic wand that's going to save them? Well, they said that, didn't think, they? Thirty P. I, yeah, I don't yeah. think that is. Well, <laughs> something else could be. I, I mean, Thirty P. Lenock actually said out loud, surely before being made deputy chairman of the party, that they they've got nothing to actually campaign on in terms of achievements and successes. They won the last election. I grant you, he's not exactly Walter Badgett when it comes to political analysis, but he is representative of a a particularly grisly rump. Of, of British politics, and so they would go into the next election on culture wars and transgender issues, and I suppose they see this as, as, a, as a very important front on the culture wars. The problem with culture wars is that they force populists to do politics. That's, that's the calculation I think they've all missed. Culture wars force populists to do politics. The reason why Farage can retain popularity is because he never has to do actual politics. He can just say, jam tomorrow, or um, apple pie for everybody, or, oh, it's easy to fix this problem. Whereas if you adopt those tactics in Parliament, as many populists have done, people like um, Jonathan Gullis and uh, 30p Lee Anderson and various other... Uh, odd characters who've come into British politics in recent years, they they think that you can do the populism and somehow essay it into politics or policy. You can't. <laughs>